Hong Kongers will often say that we have, you know, we have, we just want to keep our way of life. And that's what's interesting about the protests is that they actually aren't advocating for independence or anything more. They just want China to leave them alone. So for Hong Kongers, Hong Kong is very separate and very different from mainland China. It is somewhere where you have a free and independent press, where people have political freedoms, they have the right to say what they want, they have the right to go out and protest and march. People feel a sense of trust in the court system and rule of law. The national security law threatens all of that. It represents a sort of accumulation of years of Chinese encroachment on Hong Kong. This law was written in Beijing and direct, directly enacted in Hong Kong by Beijing rather than through Hong Kong's own legislature that outlaws a broad range of behaviors that are all supposedly related to national security. And there are four specific crimes outlined in the law and those are secession, so trying to separate Hong Kong from the, from the People's Republic of China, subversion, overthrowing the central government, um, or the Hong Kong government, terrorism, and collusion with foreign forces to undermine national security. Well, some breaking news, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo now declaring Hong Kong is no longer autonomous. Is this the beginning of the end of democracy in Hong Kong? People are worried that the law will be used against protesters and basically any critics of the government. They can be arrested and charged for one of these crimes under the national security law and the stiffest penalty is life in prison. Another risk for them is that some of the cases will be overseen directly by Beijing, in which case those people would be sent to mainland China um, and tried in mainland courts. And Chinese courts do use the death penalty. One part of the law that is uh, pretty extraordinary is that it seems to say that it applies to people that are outside of Hong Kong who are not Hong Kong permanent residents, so anybody, anywhere. Do not let fear be driven into your hearts, because if you let fear dominate you, then they will win. There has very quickly been a chill that has spread across the city. Political groups have disbanded, people have gone dark on social media. People who have the means to move abroad have, a lot of people have expressed wanting to move abroad. They feel that it's hopeless in Hong Kong and, you know, they don't want their children to grow up brainwashed um, by the Chinese government. But for a lot of people, they don't have that option of moving abroad. So for a lot of people in Hong Kong, the situation is very grim. Beijing says that it is imposing this law because it, it needs to bring stability back to Hong Kong because Hong Kong for the last year has been rocked by these protests. Looking at this more broadly, this fits into Beijing wanting to bring Hong Kong more under its control after years of seeing how the one country, two systems hasn't actually brought Hong Kongers closer to mainland China. But the one country principle is non-negotiable as without one country, two systems will stand on shaky ground and Hong Kong's stability and prosperity will be at risk. Hong Kongers will often say that we have, you know, we have, we just want to keep our way of life. And that's what's interesting about the protests is that they actually aren't advocating for independence or anything more. They just want China to leave them alone. <laughs> you know, if China's goal is to bring Hong Kong fully into the fold by passing this law, they have pushed Hong Kong people further away. So in one sense, this law, well, a lot of people say that it spells the end of Hong Kong, but it has also entrenched a, a long-term resistance to China.